Hello and welcome to our first video lesson on Chapter 19, Regulation of Mammalian Fuel Metabolism. Our subject for this lesson is the regulation of metabolism through compartmentation of pathways and processes. Of course, energy is the capacity to do work. The human body needs to be able to convert energy into biological work, and there's a certain amount of output at wor or work that needs to be done at a cellular level at a constant level. Unfortunately, input, that is the food that we eat, can be variable, that is dynamic. And so the question is, how do we keep the same amount of work going when the input is variable? Well, adaptation is key to this process. And that means that different organs and tissues have to communicate with each other in order to function as a unit so that they can adjust the use of various metabolic pathways so that they can adapt to the input. So we have a need for regulation on a more global, that is a system-wide scale. And there are two main ways of regulating in this way. One is compartmentation. That is, we keep opposing processes spatially separate so that we're not running them both at the same time. Also, there's hormonal control, where we use an outside signal to stimulate some change inside the cell. We've really considered cellular compartmentation as we've considered various metabolic pathways. Anabolic and catabolic pathways are regulated, that is opposing pathways are regulated so that we don't operate both at the same time and suffer an energy loss as a result. Opposing processes may be specially separated into different cellular compartments. A prime example of that is fatty acid beta oxidation which takes place in the mitochondrial matrix as opposed to fatty acid synthesis which takes place in the cytosol. That's one way we have of regulating them and making sure that both processes aren't running simultaneously. Of course if we have processes in different compartments then that necessitates transporting metabolites across membranes and for that reason we have multiple transporters. Some of these we've considered. Here is a figure from your book illustrating many of the types of transporters that are needful because of this situation. You are only responsible for those transporters that we've already considered. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the types of metabolic pathways that operate in different organs.